qualified to work with live electrical circuits? If you're unsure, the answer is most likely no. When it comes to the risk of electric injury, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, identifies two categories of employees, qualified and unqualified. Qualified employees, usually electricians or engineers, are specially trained on how to avoid the hazards of working around exposed live parts and are usually responsible for maintaining or repairing electrical equipment. Unqualified employees are those who face a risk of electric shock but are not trained to work on or near exposed live parts. OSHA requires that unqualified employees be trained in and able to recognize hazards that pose a threat to their safety. This is electrical safety training for unqualified employees. We're going to hear from experts and people that might work right next to you about electrical safety. People just like you that care and want you to be safe in the workplace and beyond. We'll start with getting to know the basics of how electricity works. We'll move to common electrical hazards and safeguards. And in the event an incident involving electricity does occur, we'll cover the best choices for emergency response. I think the best way to start is compare electricity to plumbing. And in your house, when you turn the faucet on, water comes out. What makes the water come out? Pressure. Pressure is what's forcing the water out. Voltage is what forces the electricity or electrons out for us when we plug something in. So we compare the gallons per minute coming out of your, your faucet to ampacity or amperes. So the size of a wire would be similar to the size of a plumbing pipe. Bigger wire, bigger pipe, more flow of water, more flow of ampacity or electrons. This diagram shows you a simple electrical circuit. A current flows from one terminal of the voltage source along a conductor to the load, and then along another conductor and back to the source. If you interrupt the flow at any point along a circuit, the current stops and the load stops working. In order to make this drill work, current needs to flow from the outlet, through the cord, and into the tool where it's used to turn the motor. At home, you may be used to resetting a circuit breaker every once in a while. At work, it's a good idea to let your supervisor know if there's a problem with circuit breakers. Whether we like it or not, electrical hazards are all around us. And if you're like me, you probably take for granted that electrical incidents are fairly rare, and usually the simplest precautions protect us. Electrically, when we talk about risks, we've, we've got two direct hazards. We've got shock hazards and we've got arc flash hazards. There's a lot of indirect uh, injury potentials in the workplace, but when we, when we look at the electrical topic, we're just dealing with those two primary causes of, of potential fatality, right? The, the, the hard part with, with electrical safety in the workplace is all of the other variables that come into play. The number one variable is you. Your actions in the workplace can keep you safe when working around or with electricity. The most common causes of electrical accidents are carelessness. I would have to boil down to one of my favorite words, complacency. Some of the most common causes of electrical accidents in the workplace would be the unaware worker coming into contact with open energized parts. People that work on electrical circuits that are unqualified. The most common cause of electrical accidents is carelessness. Electrical accidents in the workplace can be caused by many things. Sometimes it's an unqualified person doing the work. Sometimes it could be faulty electrical equipment. But all too often it can be poor workmanship, somebody not paying attention, being in a hurry. So we really need to have our heads on straight when we do electrical work. Labels, signs, and barricades on electrical systems are there to protect you, not only from shock, but from a serious, lesser-known threat called arc flash, arc blast. An arc flash is when a piece of conductive material or something conductive comes into contact with the energized part of electrical equipment and something that's grounded. It creates a, a, a fireball or a flame that comes shooting out of that electrical equipment that can be up to 35,000 degrees in temperature. An arc blast is uh, when that superheating occurs, it'll superheat the material and particles in the air. When they vaporize, they actually create a concussion blast, similar to an explosion from dynamite or something like that. The arc blast is actually that concussion effect. Yeah. 
We've already established that safety is up to each and every one of us when working around or with electricity. We know what the hazards are. Now we'll hear more about proven ways to prevent incidents, injuries, or worse. The most common thing I see with people using electricity unsafely is not inspecting the equipment before use. So making sure that your tools are in proper condition and that your cords have properly inspected and that there's no damage to the cords. An unqualified individual can do a simple check on an extension cord to know if it's, it's the proper cord for the task that they're doing. Um, typically, larger tools or larger equipment are going to require a larger extension cord or a heavier gauge wire in an extension cord. The gauge of the cord is clearly labeled on the extension cord, so it's an easy thing to verify. Typically, a, a small brown two-wire lamp cord is not going to be adequate to run a jackhammer. If an unqualified employee is in a situation where an individual receives a shock, first thing they need to do is stop immediately, secure the scene, and get help. The best thing for the injured employee is to get proper medical attention at that time. If you come upon a scene and you think someone has been exposed to electricity, the first thing you need to do is make sure that you are safe. The next thing you need to do is follow your plant's emergency procedures. Call for help. 911, uh, the facility's emergency response team, and they definitely should not touch them. When you're working around electrical equipment, safety should be foremost in your mind. You face hazards from both the equipment and the electricity that powers it. If you haven't been trained as a qualified employee, you should always stay clear of any exposed electric parts. This even includes something as simple as changing a blown fuse. Let a qualified employee take care of it. Similarly, if you trip a circuit breaker, report it to your supervisor or a qualified employee. If you're operating a piece of equipment and it malfunctions, you should never remove guards, panels, or other protective devices to expose the wiring. Always call for the assistance of a qualified employee. Be safe out there. Pay attention to warning signs and labels on electrical equipment and panels. Don't store anything in front of electrical service panels or other areas that are supposed to be kept clear. And this is critical. Unqualified employees are not allowed to work on exposed live parts under any circumstances. In the event of an emergency, follow your company's policy and get help as quickly as you can. Electrical safety is the responsibility of each individual. Don't depend on your coworkers to keep you safe. You are the one person responsible for making sure you're going home safely from work each day.